Hey guys, we are here on the Turkish coast on a catamaran. We're sailing for 12, 12 days along the Turkish coast. Um, so yeah, join me for my travel journal, I guess. Um, it's going to be a bit longer than usual, so grab your popcorn, sit down, relax and enjoy. See you guys. Welcome to my travel journal. In this volume, we explore Turkey by boat. Day one. We slept in a little after our exhausting traveling. We unpacked, showered, and then went for a scrambled egg breakfast at the restaurant where Bullen's daughter works as a waiter. At roughly 11 a.m., we set sail for our first stop. As we were sailing, we slowly drove past a large cave but could unfortunately not stop as there were some other boats already anchored there. We motored on until we got to a beautiful little bay where we stopped for our first swimming break. The water was absolutely divine. It's our first one. After a swim and lounging around in the sun, working on our tans, we motored around to another secluded bay where we swam to the side with our slops in hand and scrambled our way up a maze of paths in the dirt, getting slightly lost along the way, to yet to the ruins of a beautiful ancient church that our skipper claims to be from the 2nd century AD. We then scrambled back to the boat and then motored back in the direction that we came from to our first overnight stop. Here we stopped on a private jetty outside a restaurant in a beautiful little bay where there were about three other similar restaurants with jetties. Unfortunately, I didn't take much video here. Day 2. We slept in again, trying to catch up on missed sleep during our flights. After we woke up, we set off for the day and had fresh bread with ham and cheese for a late brunch. midday swim by a tiny little island in another beautiful secluded bay. It was the strangest thing, there were goats on this tiny island. The water here was absolutely incredible. Visibility was approximately 70 meters and the color was the bluest of blues. We stayed here for a couple hours alternating between swimming and sunbathing. From here we had a reasonably long sail, a couple hours where we actually sailed for the first time. The wind was quite strong, so we only hoisted the Genoa and made a good 7 knots. The next overnight spot was amazing. We stopped at a small private jetty at the foot of a hill with an ancient fort perched on top. The fort overlooks the entrance to the bay and was used in ancient times to protect the village in the back of the bay from pirates. Marco, Katie, Holly, my dad and myself hiked up to the fort with a cooler box to watch the sunset over the ocean with a glass of wine in hand. We also walked around the old fort and took lots of pictures and videos. It was an absolutely stunning view. Day 3. 
Holly and I woke up relatively early and sat outside and enjoyed the fresh morning breeze. We had a long sail today, so we set off at roughly 10 a.m. for our four hour sail to our next destination. While sailing, Holly and I made everyone some French toast, but because the traditional bread here is quite flat, we renamed it to French Fingers. Luckily, it turned out very well and we had a delicious brunch. Our first stop for the day was a historic site where there were the ruins of an entire ancient city. After running out of time and only having explored a small fraction of the ruins, we headed back to the boat so that we could be on our way again. As soon as we were aboard the yacht, we set off our overnight stop in a rush. Our stop for the night was in a small marina in Palamut. Once we had docked, we all went for a walk. There was one main street running along the ocean, which was home to multiple restaurants situated right on the beach. We walked along this road to look at the beautiful old town, but also to pick a restaurant for dinner later that evening. Day four. As we were hoisting our anchor to set sail for our next destination, our anchor snagged onto another boat's anchor and we were stuck, being blown around by the wind in a tiny marina, edging closer and closer to the other boats. Luckily, our captain Bullant was sharp and managed to get the anchor free before anything went askew. We then set sail, heading to our first swimming spot for the day, which was yet again amazing. We stayed there for a while and just relaxed on the boat. We then set sail again and stopped off at an ancient church. ashore and had a look around. These old ruins had a very special feeling to them, almost as if we were standing there with the people of this ancient civilization. sailed to the town of Selamia for our overnight stop. This was easily my favorite place that we visited. It was a quaint little town on the edge of the ocean with a beautiful promenade running along the ocean, filled with stunning restaurants, cafes, bars and shops. The promenade was beautifully lit with many colorful lights and was made entirely of massive stone blocks. We decided to dine at a restaurant that had a little deck over the ocean with fairy lights hanging above our heads. I had one of the best seafood pastas that I've ever had. After dinner we strolled around the town until almost midnight, then we went back to the boat to go sleep. Day 5 we woke up early to go for a drive on the dinghy with Marco and Katie. We weaved in between all the yachts, looking at the beautiful town as we remoted along. After our drive, we headed into town for a delicious breakfast overlooking the sea. Afterwards, we then set sail for a short sail to some volcanic islands where we stopped off for a swim once again. We could not get enough of this stunning warm water. From here, we sailed for a while to our overnight stop at the Bosburn Yacht Club. This place was something I would have only imagined existed in dreams. It was absolutely idyllic. And to top it all off, there was an adorable little puppy. We explored the property, taking many photos, and then settled in at the bar for a couple of cocktails. After cocktails, we went to dinner. Dinner was had right on the edge of the sea under beautiful fairy lights. Once again, food was absolutely delicious. Day 6. We woke up nice and early, heading over to the dining area for breakfast buffet. Today, we set off relatively early for our day's adventure. 
At about midday, we stopped for a swimming break, lunch, and some sunbathing. It was an extremely hot day, so we spent a lot of time in the water. From all of our time in the sun, we were starting to get some really nice tans going at this point. After spending the hottest time of the day in the water and lounging around on the yacht, we set sail again for our overnight stop. The wind was pumping, so we made good speed to our destination. Overnight stop was a little place hidden in the back of a small secluded bay run by one of Bullen's good friends. It was a very quiet bay with literally only one building. This was due to it being an archaeological site with old artifacts lying on the ocean floor. The name of the restaurant where we had dinner was Captain Nemo's Farm Restaurant. Our host for the evening was the funniest person I have ever met and his hospitality was unrivaled. We had delicious lamb casseroles for dinner and then spent the rest of the evening laughing and dancing. Bullent and our host even showed us a traditional Turkish dance. We were then encouraged to show off our South African dancing skills. Needless to say, we all had two left feet. Day 7 after drinking way too much rocky the previous night, we all slept in while Bullen set sail at 6.30 a.m. We woke up to another beautiful day and decided to make scrambled eggs for breakfast. Before long, we were at our swimming spot for the day. The terrain here was quite different from what we'd seen previously. It was a lot greener with many more trees. Here, we did some free diving and snorkeling and just lazed around in the crystal clear water, rejuvenating body and mind. set sail for Fetier. We docked at the Yacht Classic Marina and then set off on foot to go explore the city for the evening. For dinner we went to Pasa Kebab for an authentic Turkish dinner in the streets of the beautiful city. While exploring the markets, we found some amazing and strange things. Amongst my favorite were the multiple shops absolutely filled with Turkish delight, and also the many, many stores that sold genuine fakes. If you ever want to go shopping for branded products but can't afford the real thing, you most definitely need to visit the markets in Fethiye. Day 8 after spending the day relaxing at the yacht club, we got into a taxi to go paragliding. After what was the scariest drive of my life, we got to the top of Babadug Mountain at 1,969 meters above sea level. We quickly kitted up and proceeded to jump off of the edge of the mountain. It was the most amazing experience I have ever encountered. Day 9, 
We set sail just after breakfast so that we could arrive at our first stop of the day before the majority of the tourist boats arrived. Just before we reached our stop, we could see the mountain where we jumped off of yesterday. Our stop was St. Nicholas Island. This island was full of the ruins of an ancient town, which for some reason had four churches. We swam ashore and began exploring. It was an incredibly hot day, but our fascination with the ruins kept us going. Once we were done, we motored around to Blue Lagoon, which is a popular tourist beach. We weren't allowed to sail into the lagoon, so we anchored just outside and swam in. The beach was absolutely packed. We looked around and then headed back to the boat. Unfortunately, at this point my camera died, but we had a short 30 minute sail to our overnight stop. Day 10. Early the next morning we set out for our day's adventure. Our first stop was a cave, which was nestled in the cliff face at the waterline. Marco and Katie were the only two to swim as we were all still very tired and it was a rather chilly morning. After exploring the cave and taking photos, we set sail for Butterfly Valley. Once we arrived, we took the dinghy to shore and started hiking to the end of the valley where we were promised to be greeted by a stunning waterfall. As one would expect, we saw some butterflies along the way. Walking deeper and deeper into the valley, the cliff faces started growing taller and taller, closing in on us until we finally reached a point where we could go no further. In front of us was a pretty little waterfall, flowing over the rocks, but we were quite confused as we were expecting a huge waterfall. That was until we realized that we were there in the dry season and upon further inspection, we saw where the would-be waterfall would have plunged many, many meters down from the top of the cliffs. We made a mental note that we would have to come back someday in the rainy season. We then headed back to the boat and motored to our overnight stop of Goshek. Unfortunately, I didn't record any video, but we walked around for a while and then chose a restaurant for dinner. Holly and I had delicious lamb shanks. Day 11. Bullen set sail from Goshek early in the morning while we were all asleep. Not too long after being woken up by some pretty rough seas, we arrived at our mooring for the next night. However, the day's adventure only just started here. Soon after arriving, a little boat came and picked us up and set off for the town of Dalian. Now, since this town was inland, we took the little boat and entered the Dalian River and made our way upriver, weaving through the many channels. After about 30 minutes, the boat dropped Katie, Marco, Holly and myself off at an indistinct jetty. We would meet up with old people again in a bit. After a 20 minute walk, we arrived at our destination. It's so hot! The ruins of an ancient city.
After exploring the city for a while, we decided to climb up to the fort perched on top of the mountain. It was a blisteringly hot 48 degrees Celsius, so we didn't stay at the top for very long. After making our way back down, we met the boat again where it dropped us off and headed into town to meet up with old people to have some lunch. We all had burgers and ice cold drinks. Unfortunately, we didn't have much time to explore the town as we needed to get back to the boat before sundown. Once we were back at the boat, we relaxed for a while, taking in the breathtaking view and the sunset before heading to the restaurant for dinner. Day 12 Today we all woke up knowing that it was our last day in Turkey, so our moods were quite low as none of us were ready to leave just yet. Turkey was just too amazing. We had a long stretch to sail to get back to Marmaris, so for most of the day we just lazed around on the boat taking in the scenery as we sailed along. Sailing along the coast is a feeling and sight that I will never forget. Once we were getting close to Marmaris, we decided to stop at a pizzeria for lunch. Here, we also had our last swim in the beautiful, crystal clear, warm Turkish sea. It's our last swim in Turkey. From here, we set sail for the port of Marmaris. And once there, we fueled up the boat and proceeded to dock for the last time. exploring the beautiful, vibrant town and said our goodbyes from the highest point in Marmaris. Day 13 We're leaving this morning very, 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 very sad. But I guess all good things come to an end. 